Okay, so we have 4 minus, oh, what's our 4 minus 0? We're going to have 4, okay, very good. And we have negative 2 minus, what's negative 2 minus 3? Negative 5. Perfect. 4 over negative 5. Now, I do have to tell you, it doesn't really matter where that negative goes, but we typically will write the slope with a negative out front or the negative on the 4. Because we like to identify that negative as being our rise, with our rise, the run is always going to be going to the right. So I'm going to rewrite this just slightly. I'm going to write it negative 4 over 5. Show me with your hands. Should our graph be going upwards like this, or should it be going downwards like this? What do you think? Downwards. Why downwards? It's yeah, it's negative. That's a negative slope right there. This slope is going to be dropping as we go from left to right. Um, what is our rise on this graph? So we're going to be dropping four and then going to the left or right? right. How many? Five. Yeah, that's how we go from point to point. You go from every point, down four, over five, down four, over five. It's like a staircase. That's how this, this is sloped. I'm going to show you how to find the slope. Let's take this one step further. So now we have the slope, what I want to do after this is, with the same, the same problem, I'd like to write the equation between these two points. So find the slope between this, dot, 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 and then write the equation. So let's go through this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, do you think this is going to be a horizontal line? What do you think? Horizontal line? No. Horizontal line would have a slope of zero. Is this a slope of zero? Yeah. That's certainly not horizontal then. Can I use um, slope intercept? To use slope intercept, you have to have the slope, which we have now, but you also have to have the y intercept. Do you have the y intercept? No. If you did, the y intercept would be zero, comma, something. We don't have zero. We have something comma zero, but we don't have zero comma something. That's the y-intercept. Not sure if you're with me on that. Okay, so we don't have those two forms that we can use. That leaves us with only one form we can choose. This is the form you're going to be using 90% of the time in this class. 98% of the time. 98 point, like a lot in this class. All right, you're going to be using point slope because you're given a point, and now you found a slope. that for you. So write the equation, use point slope, y minus y1 equals n, x minus x1. Let's see if we have what, what it qualifies to use point slope. Hey, it tells you what you need, right? You need a, a point and you need, well, the slope. Do we have the slope? Great, we just found that. Do we have a point? In fact, we have two points. Well, wait a second. How do you choose which one to use? Well, Firstly, it doesn't matter, but secondly, haven't you already identified a y1 and an x1? So we can use that there. So really, after you do the slope, after you find that, it's already set up for you to use this problem. That's kind of, isn't that nice? Say so, yes, Mr. Lennon, that's very nice. <laughs> yeah, you already have a y1 and an x1. Now, can you change them? Sure, you could if you really want to. Um, some of you might be wondering, why in the world would you ever change these? Well, is it easier to work with zeros or with numbers? Zeros typically, right? Because you can add zero and subtract zero very easily, right? So usually what people will do is they will set up their, their points in such a way that your x1 and your y1 are involving the most zeros. That's your country with me on that. That's the easier way to do this. Okay, so now I've done that automatically, but if I had looked at this problem at the beginning and these points were reversed, I'd probably switch them before I did this, so I'd have my x1 and my y1 with the zeros. Not so much for the slope, but for this thing over here. That's what I was talking about earlier when I said you can set this up in certain ways to make it a little bit easier on yourself. Okay? If you didn't catch that, if, if that went over your head, then don't worry about it. This will work exactly the same way. Um, you just set up x1, y1, x2, y2. You stick with your same x1, y1, and we can go from here. Okay? Raise your hand if you're okay with this. Still it gets over here? Okay. Let's go ahead and let's substitute in some points then. 
Do I substitute anything in for this y right here? No. That is my variable. That's going to stay there no matter what. How about for, well, my minus stays a minus. How about the y1? What's my y1? Zero. Yeah. Good. So that's, that's right here. I already have a label. Equals m. Oh, what's my m? How much? Negative yeah, I just found that. Yeah, that's right here. I just found my m. So negative four fifths. Okay, great. So we have negative three. Zero. Yeah, y one is zero. Oh, I don't know. I was testing you again. You guys are so good at this. I don't know why I did that. I was thinking zero. I, my my hand, stupid hand, just kind of it went like this instead of like this. Anyway, yeah, it should certainly be zero. So we have our zero from our y one. You know, I looked at the three. We have our slope, our m. We just found that that's negative four fifths. Let's fill in the rest of this. We've got our x. We're not going to plug anything for that x. That's our variable. We have our minus, and then what are we going to put for the x one? Three. Let's see if I can get this one right. <laughs> Ah, we got it. Now just if you're okay getting from here to here. Good. It's already labeled for you. You just have to plug it in. Now we do some simple math because what we're going to try to do is take this from point slope and get this into slope intercept. The reason why we do that is because slope intercept is generally easy to graph. We like to go to the intercept and use the slope to find the next point. So y minus, how much is y minus zero? Four. Just y. Yeah. Minus zero, that doesn't do anything. Wait a second, how do we do this? Yeah, that's that's pre-algebra stuff, but it's important to get this right, isn't it? So, how you distribute, you take the number outside your parentheses with the sign. We distribute that into both terms. So, negative four-fifths times x is going to give you... That's the easy one. The next one is a, is a fraction. You have negative four-fifths times negative three. Negative four-fifths times negative three. First thing, you're going to get a plus or minus. Plus. Definitely a plus. How much is negative four-fifths times three? Use your calculator if you have a fraction mode. Do it off the side if you don't. Do it in your head if you can. Um, you take four-fifths times three. Just do it off to the side here. Four-fifths times three. You, know, you should know how to multiply some fractions here. Four-fifths times three is what? Twelve-fifths. So you have three over one. You know how to multiply fractions together. You can have twelve over five. Could we have a factored out the fraction before? How do you mean? Like just times everything by five. You could, but you're going to end up with the same thing anyway because you'd have a five y over here. Okay. You remember when you when you multiply by five, you do this side and this side. So you're going to have that five y. You end up dividing with by it anyway. Wow. So either way, you're going to have this fraction. There's no way to really get rid of this one. That's a good question. Good idea, though. Good idea. You do all right that fraction stuff. Good. Get used to those fractions, because you will get them doing your slope and your y-intercept. Could you still graph that? What's my y-intercept? How much is 12 fifths? I go up 2 and 2 fifths. That's kind of an awkward number, right? And then I'd somehow go down four and to the right five, which is what we talked about. I'd like you to try one, and we'll, we'll end with this. Actually, we'll end with some horizontal lines in just a bit. But go ahead and see if you can find the slope between these two points, and then use that to write the equation, all right? These go faster than what I've just shown you because I had to show you the work. Uh, typically, they only take a couple minutes, which is nice. So try that between these two points. There you go.
So to write the equation of a line, you need at minimum one point and the slope. Right now you're given two points. So the first thing you must do is, of course, you have to find the slope. So hopefully you, you've done that or you're working on that right now. Once you've found the slope, you'll have a point, and then you'll have a slope. You use what slope? We'll get started in about one more minute. I also want you to end this in slope-intercept form, so that means you need to solve for y when you're done. Hey, uh, by a show of hands, how many people pick this one to be x1? Anybody pick this one to be x1? Okay, are you going to get the same answers? Yes. Absolutely, you will. Now, which one might be easier? Uh, for the slope, it doesn't matter. For this, it'd probably be easiest to pick this one as your x1. The reason why, I want you to look at the formula. If this is x1 and this is y1, notice how you plug it in a 0. Do you see that? makes things easier over here. If this is x1 and this is y1, you're plugging in two numbers that you have to work with, and eventually you're going to have to subtract 2, sorry, add 2 to both sides. Do you see that? So at the end of your problem, most of you probably added 2 to both sides, right? If you pick the 0, you wouldn't have to do that. You just, it's 0. Okay, so it's y. So it's, if you, again, if that's over your head, you stick with what you're, what you're doing. Um, but it will make things easier if you pick the most zeros for your x1, y1. Now I'm going to do it this way because more people picked this way. So x1, y1, x2, y2, we're going to find our slope first. That's we, what we have to start with. So we're going to have 0 minus 2. We're going to have 2 minus, neg oh, 2 minus negative 1. How many people have it exactly like that on the paper with the minus and the negative? Good, that's important. We take our 0 minus the 2. 2 minus, that minus has to be there no matter what this is, that just happens to be negative 1. So we have the minus and the negative. What's that minus the negative do? So this is negative 2 over 3. Again, is this graph climbing or falling from left to right? Good, it's going like this. That's exactly right. <coughs> now we have our slope, which is great. We've got two points. One of them is already outlined as x1, y1, so we can go ahead and use this formula now. We're going to have y minus y1. In our case, y1 happens to be 2. So I'm going to have y minus 2. Are you still with me? Good. Equals m. We just found our m. Make sure you have the negative. 2 thirds. x minus, x, x minus what? Negative 1. Like this? No. That would be x minus 1. This is x minus negative 1. That looks horrible. 